Okay, today is April 15, 2014. It's tax day. And it's a, another interesting day in the market. Well, essentially, it's the same old, same old like yesterday. It's kind of replay, you know, at an earlier hour. Remember yesterday, the last 40 minutes, we have a rally, you know, from the day low and went back all the way up and we cover all the losses and close near the high of the day. So it's the same thing, same kind of play today. You know, open up a little bit and then it kind of faded and put in a low somewhere around 1 o'clock and then a little bit after 1, then a market rally and we cover all the losses and then close near the high of the day. Okay. So that's the same kind of play as yesterday, but it's different now. Right. Okay. So let's take a look at the S&P 500. You can see the S&P 500 open right here and it kind of, you know, I think after the first 30 minutes, then it stopped faded, you know, uh, uh, selling off and come down and tag this 1818 level once again. All right, so once it broke that 16, 1818 level, then uh, put in that low and start rallying back up. And it recovered all the losses, including, you know, uh, and, uh, and, and make, you know, get back up to near the high of the day and close near the high of the day at this uh, 1840 level. Okay. So tomorrow, we might see a little bit, uh, uh, we could see a little bit more of a price uh, uh, move up and maybe trying to tag this 1848, 1850. Then, you know, see how uh, it will react when it gets to that level. Would it, uh, you know, break above that level or hit that as a resistance and start pulling back again and we sell off again and maybe we see the same old play. Right, sell off and get down to the low of the day, maybe come down and tag this level again, you know, 1818 level, maybe this time now it's 1820 or 1825, and then we run it back up. Who knows, right? Anything is possible with this market. Right? But the thing is, you know, today's price action, just like, you know, any other day within the last couple of weeks, it's very choppy, very volatile. So if you're not doing any kind of quick, day trading or anything like that. The best thing is just to stand on the sideline and just watch and let these choppy up, you know, action play itself out. Then, you know, uh, wait and be patient until the market give, give, give the opportunity for people that want to do swing trade to reinitiate, either swing long or swing short. Because right now, you know, if we take a look at the 10-minute chart here on this S&P 500, you can see, you know, it's open right here. And then after the first 30 minutes, right, you know, after this first 30 minute here, okay, then it starts to, you know, just come down, right, all the way down to this level here, which is, you know, slightly above yesterday's, uh, you know, pivot point where it got this, uh, you know, last, uh, last hour uh, rally. Okay, and then you see that it just come up, you know, tag that, uh, you know, pivot low, then it's just running all the way back up and closing near the high of the day, right? I mean, there's no no pause at all. It's not like there's any kind of a, you know, dramatic zigzag, you know, any type of a pause or any type of a, you know, consolidation. It just ran, you know, it's just like squeezing something short. It's just like some massive short covering or whatever, right? Okay. So, and then if we look at the uh, Dow Jones 30, similarly, you know, for the Dow Jones uh, Industrial, uh, you know, similar price action as the S&P, you know, it opened up and after the first 30 minutes, it came down and tagged this, uh, you know, 16,060 level. And then it just, uh, you know, rallied back up, recovered all the losses and get back near the uh, high of the day and close uh, at uh, somewhere around this uh, 16,260 area. Okay. So... So we got to keep an eye on this, uh, you know, to see what it continue to run and try to tag this and come back up to this, uh, you know, maybe this, uh, you know, 16,340, 16,370 area. Okay. Uh, and uh, also, you know, if we also look at the 10 minute, you can see the similar type of, you know, price action after the first 30 minute sold off, you know, right after a little, uh, one o'clock, uh, you know, then start rally back up and close near the high of the day. Okay. Then uh, for the Nasdaq uh, uh, 100, you see the Nasdaq 100 really put in a little doji here. It just kind of opened and uh, didn't spend too much time on a positive area. Then it just kind of sold off and came down and broke through this 3420 area, this level. Then it started rallying back up. I mean, so uh, if we uh, look at that at the uh, 10 minute, you can see that you know, see you know, see kind of have a little gapped up, you know, run it up a little bit. And then it just kind of uh, sold off. Uh, look, everyone went went to 
the previous day low or, or the uh, two days ago, you know, on Monday. Uh, I think this is the, uh, you know, last Thursday. Right? What day was that? Uh, no, on the 11th, that's uh, the Friday. Okay, so as you can see, that even went below Friday's low. Came down, uh, you know, tagged this level somewhere around the 34.14, and then rallied all the way back up and almost uh, closed at the high of the day. Okay, so and, uh, similarly for the uh, Russell 2000, Right. So likewise, yeah, just like the Nasdaq, as a matter of fact, the Russell went negative before the Nasdaq uh, 100 did, and it came down, and once again, shortly after 1 o'clock, it rallied back up and closed near the uh, high of the day. Okay. So, and then uh, if we look at the daily chart here, you can also see the daily has actually came down and almost tagged this particular uh, pivot low uh, level here. And then it came back up, and now it's uh, tagging this 11.22. So, okay. so there's uh, certainly uh, some uh, interesting price action. And if we look at the ETF, looking at the spider, right, you know, so you can see the spider came down right, to that 181.75, somewhere around there, or, uh, or this, uh, you know, so uh, you know, this is the, uh, yeah, this 181.75. Uh, 75, 181, 68, somewhere around this, uh, basically this pivot low here, and it came back up, and now it might be uh, coming back and tag this uh, 184, 185 area. Okay. Uh, same thing with the uh, the Q. Right, the Q came down, right, pretty close to this zone here. We're essentially looking at this, uh, you know, supporting zone somewhere around this pivot near these uh, 83 level, and. Uh, Right now, it seems to be, uh, you know, uh, came down, uh, holding on this level here. It might be uh, coming back up to this pivot, pivot low here tomorrow. You know, somewhere around the 85.50, and who knows? It might even uh, try to make a run back up to the 86, 87 area. So we kind of have to keep an eye on that. And certainly, uh, you know, this low uh, is still in play. Right? It could uh, really easily come back down and uh, test these low for uh, support again. And if it doesn't hold, maybe another uh, another replay of the uh, same old play again. Maybe you know come down, uh, tag uh, you know the low near here, and then run it back up. Right? So and similarly for the IWM, see the IWM actually came one penny uh, above this particular low here, and then it start rallying back up, and it closed with a little bit of a doji with this long candle wick. So certainly, uh, this price action is getting very, very volatile. Uh, so we gotta be really careful, and we might be uh, seeing this thing come back up to this, uh, maybe this 112 area tomorrow. Right? You know, this, uh, this uh, level here, this pivot here. Okay, uh, or it could uh, come back down and retest this level once again. This, uh, you know, uh, 108, 60, uh, 65. I believe this is the close. Okay. So, but there are some interesting uh, uh, price action on some stock as well, and the one that uh, you know we talked about is Twitter. You know, Twitter actually finally caught a bit today. It was acting, uh, you know, uh, really strong today compared to everybody else. You know, and, and remember we were talking about that they have to get above this. Uh, you know, reclaim this uh, 42 area. If we could reclaim back above, above this 42, then we'd like to see some sort of consolidation. And then maybe it could run back up to, uh, you know, this uh, 50 area or at least at this uh, 48 area. You see this big price action here. This could be some short squeeze going on also. Right? And, uh, you know, so uh, let's take a look at the 10-minute chart here on uh, on, on uh, Twitter. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, holding on here. And once it gets above this this level, you know, book due here on this 42, and it just kind of ran off. Okay. So, uh and, and and there's no no pause at all, right? So I did the, uh, you know, I tweeted out on Twitter that uh, I did a little scalp, you know, trade on Twitter. So once it start, uh, you know, running, running up uh, uh, at this uh, level here, then essentially, you know, I went in and do a little bit of a, a day trade, and want to see a price action of these type of candle. Then you basically start uh, putting trail stop on there, right? Putting trail stop to uh, Basically, uh, uh, to start scaling out. Right. So, and uh, who knows? You know, maybe tomorrow 
it will continue to run, but certainly I'm not going to carry that overnight, not under uh, this uh, market uh, condition. So let's uh, you know take a look at uh, another one is uh, Facebook. Okay, uh, Facebook. Uh, you know I was looking at Facebook to come down to this 55 level, and you can see on the intraday it actually came pretty close to that 55. Okay, you know, and it, uh, you know went below the uh, 56 here. All right, so it came down to 55, uh, 80, 55, 90 area. All right, and then uh, start rallying back up and pretty much close near the uh, high of the day, okay. So, and if we, uh, you know, tomorrow, maybe uh, it's still gonna, you know, try to come up, uh, you know, tag this 60, who know, right? You know, could uh, make a comeback to essentially tagging this little price gap here somewhere around this, you know, 60 and change, okay. And, uh, you know, but I uh, believe there's still a little bit more downside, but how much of a run up before it uh, come back and we test this 55 or even break this 55, uh, we don't know right now. Essentially, we just kind of have to uh, pay attention to the price action and let the price action tell us. Right? We're not going to go and try to arbitrarily, you know, go and guess. Right? Okay, it's just that we paint the scenario. Say, what if we come up here? What should we look for? Well, we're, we're looking for uh, some sort of resistance to see if they're coming on resistance. If there's no resistance, maybe we, you know, maybe it could run up here. Then maybe we could uh, catch a little bit of a quick trade on the long side and catch it up coming back up here. But we know if we are wrong, then maybe, you know, if uh, it come back up down to uh, this particular level, then we know we're wrong. You know, if we get back below this uh, 59 or 58 and change, then we close our long and take a little loss and, you know, move on. Right. You know, so those are the, you know, what we're trying to do, or at least what I'm trying to do based on these technical analysis. It's not to tell us, you know, is it going to do this? You know, you know, it's just going to say, well, if it's going to get to there, I'm looking at these to see if it's going to do that. If it's there, then, then that might be a possibility of doing that. Uh, I could do this, right? Or if it doesn't do that and it come down here and, uh, and, and then maybe it's looking like this, then I could do that, right? You know, so so it's this and that, right? It's not like it will, okay? We don't know. Nobody knows that it's going to do that for sure, right? Okay. So, and also looking at Tesla, right? We're talking about Tesla that come down and tag this 193, right? We talk about that, tagging this 193. Well, it came down, and then we say, if we can't hold this 193, you're going to come back and fill this gap, right? So it came down and filled this gap. Right, so it came down, filled this gap, and again, you know, it also rallied back up. So right now, it's still holding this 193. So we'll see how it's going to hold and how long it's going to hold. Uh, you know, my feeling is that, you know, remember one of the scenario is that it could come down and then maybe come back up, or right? essentially come down to this 50% retracement and break down and maybe tie, you know, test, you know, come down to this 200-day moving average, you know, which would be somewhere around these price pivot level here, right? Okay. So that's one possibility. Or it could, you know, basically, you know, come up, you know, since it got down to this 50% retracement, it just come up and break out, you know, and then come back up and tag this 270 again. Who know? Right? That's one possibility. Okay? So we just have to watch the price action to see what it's going to do because there's a trend line down here. So is it going to break this trend line? Right? That's one of the level. Essentially, reclaiming this 208, 209, this 61.8. Right, retracement level or basically this pivot level, right? Could it get get back above these pivot level, right? Okay, so uh, what was that? Uh, Yahoo, right? You know, you know, we were looking at Yahoo. Uh, I don't have the after hours set up on here, so but uh, essentially, believe Yahoo came up to uh, 37 or something, you know, uh, after hour the high, so. So certainly, I think Yahoo will probably, uh, if it hold up tomorrow, it probably will help uh, push the Nasdaq 100. And uh, I'm not sure what Intel uh, did. So, but anyway, uh, hopefully uh, you had a good day. Uh, or my, uh, you know, hopefully that you didn't uh, get uh, slapped around too much today. And uh, uh, you know, so uh, it's not the easiest time to uh, do any kind of swing trade right now. So just just be patient. The market will come around and opportunity will show up again. So good luck.